Within the space of only 36 months, internal combustion engine sales will collapse worldwide. This will happen in a similar way to what happened to BlackBerry. You've seen the BlackBerry movie recently. BlackBerry lost market share, an enormous amount of market share within only a space of two years. In fact, the company went from a huge success to a massive failure within a very short space of time. That is about to happen to a number of automakers worldwide within the next few years. And there is one key reason for why this will happen and why it will happen so incredibly quickly. A lot of people are saying electric cars are too expensive, but electric cars have come down in price worldwide by an average of 21% this year, making it much more affordable and making the price of EVs much closer to internal combustion engine vehicles. But in China, they're already on par with internal combustion. Can the rest of the world get there? Will we get there? When will it happen? I think it's likely to happen by approximately 2025 because many people in Australia, Thailand, America drive big cars. Even Europe now, we drive bigger cars with, well, they will need bigger batteries. The bigger the battery, the more expensive the vehicle. However, there is one very compelling reason for why EVs will be significantly cheaper next year than they will this year. Now, one of those is production. Of course, Moore's Law, the more vehicles you make, the more products you make, the more the price comes down. That's pretty obvious. We all understand that fact. And that's the case clearly for companies like BYD and Tesla. The more they make, the more profit they make. They make the most vehicles, they make the most profit on every EV they sell. BYD's profit continues to grow as it sells and manufactures more vehicles. So we can see that happening in real time. However, there's one other key reason for why EVs will be significantly cheaper next year. And I don't believe that anyone is actually paying any attention to this. It's important. It will affect the value of some stocks versus others. It will affect, I think, what decisions we should make as investors, whether or not we choose to invest in one company versus another. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Thank you for tuning in. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Great to see you and welcome back, everyone else. In July of last year, lithium prices hit their highest point in history. They hit an average of 600,000 RMB per tonne. That was, well, that's quite expensive. It made battery packs actually go up in price for the first time in many, many years. This became widely known news. The media jumped on this. They love this kind of information. Drastic EVs are going to become more expensive. Battery pack prices have gone up for the first time in years. We told you EVs would not work, said Toyota. However, since then, the battery price has come down for total packs and at the cellular level month after month after month. And there's a key reason for that. Lithium carbonate prices fell from 600,000 RMB per tonne all the way down in July of this year to only 145,000 RMB. In other words, the price came down by 75%. The price then jumped back up to approximately 300,000 RMB or half of its peak. However, since then, prices of lithium carbonate have fallen. So as demand has increased, I mean, global demand for lithium has actually doubled in the past 12 months. But because we have so many mines now producing lithium, there's more than what people realized. And lithium prices, as a result, have continued to plummet. In fact, lithium prices are now back down to only 150,000 RMB or one quarter of the price that lithium was sitting at approximately one year ago. That is one of the key reasons, my friends, why BYD are making so much money. Now, people keep saying, oh, BYD's prices and their revenues have gone up, but there's really one reason for BYD's success. Of course, they're making more product and that brings the prices down, but they cannot control the price of lithium. That's an external factor and they've benefited enormously. BYD sells batteries to other companies. They also use lithium in their own batteries in their own cars. That means the price for their cars, for them to manufacture their cars and the price for them to manufacture the batteries that they sell to other companies has come down enormously for BYD. As a result, BYD's profits have hit record highs. But BYD has continued to discount the price of its electric cars in China. Tesla has not. Tesla, in fact, are just talking about raising the prices in China. In fact, they've raised the price of the Model 3 Highland significantly versus the previous price of the Model 3. They say they're going to be raising prices in about two weeks for all models in the lineup. Why? Well, because 
it's not the price war that everyone claims it is. The truth is here, profits are actually growing for some companies because battery pack prices have fallen significantly over the past six months. A new round of lithium carbonate price declines since the end of June has continued unabated as oversupply concerns persist, said CNF Post. On the 7th of November, the average price of battery grade lithium carbonate fell to 158,000 RMB per tonne, a two-year low after falling for 13 consecutive days. Separately, daily quotes from My Steel monitored by CNF Post show that battery grade lithium carbonate was sitting at 165,000 RMB per tonne, down by another 1,000 per tonne from the previous day, the ninth consecutive day of decline. So in other words, battery grade lithium prices have fallen by 50% in only a few months. However, by 74% in 12 months, the most expensive component of an EV is the battery. Approximately 35 to 40% of the cost of an EV is the battery pack. And nearly half the cost of the battery pack is the lithium itself. As a result, EV prices have come down over the past six months worldwide and will continue to do so. Now, according to the analysts, the sky is falling in. EV prices are coming down because EVs aren't selling. Actually, that's not true. EV sales this year have grown worldwide by over 25%. So EVs are selling and prices will continue to come down. But one of the key reasons is not just competition, it actually is because it's now cheaper to make an EV than it has ever been before. Trendforce supports my argument. They say that China's battery price decline will continue, not just this year, but next year as well. Trendforce says that in addition to lithium carbonate, which is a key raw material for batteries, China's lithium battery industry is also facing overcapacity. China's lithium battery industry overcapacity will continue into 2024 and battery prices will still decline next year, says market research firm Trendforce. Keep in mind too, more battery companies are popping up overseas. It's not just the fact that China has an oversupply. It's the actual possibility, the option now that you have to buy batteries from Japan, from the United States, from Europe and from South Korea. China's lithium battery exports will still perform well in 2024, but the continued release and climb of new capacity, key in point, new capacity, continued climb and release of new capacity worldwide will lead to a continuation of the overcapacity situation, meaning more downwards pressure on battery prices. China's average power battery cell prices remained in a downtrend in October and November, and power cells for EVs fell by 2% in October from September. Lithium carbonate cells fell as well. Battery storage fell by 3.3%, but over the past 12 months, battery storage prices or battery cell prices to be more precise, have actually fallen by nearly 30%. Even just in October alone, after battery pack prices had fallen significantly, cell prices came down by a further 2.2% according to Trendforce. So the trend here is down, and it's not just going down one month, it's going down month after month after month. CATL says it can now build a battery pack in about two minutes, enough cells for a battery pack in two minutes. So production is speeding up. Oversupply of lithium has forced the price of lithium down. Therefore, battery pack prices continue to fall. And it's not just lithium ternary batteries that are coming down in price. Lithium iron phosphate batteries are actually coming down as well. Now keep in mind, we have South Korean companies and North American companies also producing their own LFP cells. Not yet, but they will be next year and in 2025. Goshon High Tech is building LFP factories in the US, two of them two big ones. There's also other US manufacturers, including a US manufacturer I spoke about who makes the best lithium ion phosphate cells in the world, highest energy density at the lowest price, but they have not yet scaled up significantly. They plan to do so over the next 12 months. What happens? Price comes down. The fall in battery cell prices is dragging down the prices of upstream raw materials as well. Due to the increased 
competition from battery companies and the fact we now have more than ever, or more batteries than ever being manufactured and coming off cell lines, the willingness of battery cell manufacturers to replenish inventory has been reduced, leading to a continued decline in lithium battery raw material prices. What this means is that CATL and BYD, who have made billions and billions of dollars selling batteries, are willing to trim margins for market share, meaning they're willing to bring down their prices. Battery grade lithium carbonate was quoted at 165,000 per tonne last week. Since June 23, the average price of battery grade lithium carbonate has fallen by 48%. An imbalance between supply and demand is the reason for this round of sustained declines in lithium carbonate price. But prices will continue to fall. It won't just be next year, guys. This will happen for the next five years in a row because we have an oversupply problem worldwide. Now, Toyota would tell you there's only enough batteries worldwide for a one kilowatt size battery for every car being made. In other words, a tiny, tiny, tiny battery pack. Not actually true at all. In fact, if you look at all the batteries that are going to be manufactured, all the battery plants that are gonna be manufactured over the next five years, there will be actually too many batteries being made worldwide by 2030 for what the world actually needs to move away completely from fossil fuels to a sustainable energy market. There is simply too many factories being built to manufacture batteries. It's like a gold rush. Everyone jumped on at the same time. And if you look at the commitments from CATL, BYD, LG Energy Solutions, Samsung SDI, Panasonic, and of course, other companies like SK On, and then you look at all the battery factories of, from the companies that you don't really know that much about, you put it all together, you're looking at terawatts upon terawatts of battery production. I don't know the exact number, but it is absolutely enormous. It's way more than we need for 70 million cars to be made per year. And it's far more than what we need for pretty much the entire world to move away from fossil fuel cars within a very short space of time. People think I'm crazy saying this, but I can guarantee you within five years, they'll be saying, oh, look, we've got way more batteries than we need. Toyota was making things up. And actually, EVs are now cheaper than internal combustion. Who would have thought? Well, it's coming. Anyway, let me know if you agree with me or you disagree in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.